Hi, it's Tim from Timography here, and welcome to our third video blog post. Tonight what I thought I'd show you is just some quick masking techniques in Photoshop. Uh, what I've been doing recently is a bit of product photography, uh, shoes as you can see here. When I'm uh, photographing products, I really prefer to shoot uh, the image a half a stop or a stop underexposed. That way I can still retain a, a very nice level of detail in the product itself. As you can see here, there's no blown out highlights, uh, no clipping in the blacks either. Um, but the result is a fairly mundane looking image. Uh, it's a horrible green looking background, even though it was actually white. Uh, and you can still see the perspex stand and heel support that the shoe was sitting on, which we don't want. So, we'll just get cracking. We're going to open the image up in Photoshop. Oh, you have to forgive with uh, have to bear with me. The uh, video capture software I'm using uh, doesn't like the dual monitors that I run, so I've had to squeeze everything onto one screen. But I'm sure we'll get there. Um, so there's our shoe. So the first thing we're going to do is select the uh, quick selection wand over here and just click in the background. And what that will do is select uh, similar shaded pixels throughout the image, which it's done. If I push Q the keyboard enter the quick mask mode visually you can see that the shoe is more or less selected but we have also brought some of the perspex stand into uh, and some other detail here into the uh, mask which I don't want but not to worry push Q again to get uh, rid of that quick mask mode what I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit here um, and if I hold down the shift key uh, what I can do is actually just click on those areas that I want excluded from the mask and as you can see they pretty much disappear which is nice and easy. Um, another way to do it is to uh, enter back into the quick mask mode by pushing Q. There's a little tiny spot up here which I saw. Um, so with the quick mask selected what you can actually do is just select the eraser tool and just erase those images, or those, sorry, those uh, parts of the selection from uh, your photograph. So just once again getting rid of this, erasing them out. I'll just zoom in a little bit closer. And just on the tablet here, just erase those areas nice and quickly. Uh, nearly done. The good thing about this area too is, oops, I've actually gone outside the area, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, not to worry, we can switch from the eraser tool to the brush tool. And what I can actually do is now paint those areas back in uh, to the mask, which is a handy feature to have if you, like I did, get a bit overzealous with your eraser. Okay, so there we go. We've uh, pretty much gotten rid of those erroneous areas from the selection. But what I do want to do is to uh, exclude these little holes in the shoe from the mask because I want them to be uh, affected by the edits that I'm about to do on the background. So we'll exit that quick mask mode again, um, zoom in, and what I'll do is select the wand again and uh, holding down the shift key, just select these areas in here so that they are excluded from the mask. Nearly done. A couple more, and we're done. Okay, zoom back out. So, enter the quick mask mode again. We now have only the shoe affected by the mask, which is perfect. So we're going to turn it off, and now I'm going to hold down Control L to bring up the Levels dialog, and basically bring this white point slider all the way down the end. Uh, basically that removes any image detail uh, from the background which is what I want so it just renders it white which is what the client has requested in this instance so that's easily done that. Now there's a couple of little bits here that uh, we've missed but we'll clean them up very shortly. What I want to do now though whilst the mask is still active is to invert the selection so that now I can edit the shoe without affecting the background. So Control shift i will now invert that selection Pushing Q confirms that the background is masked. The shoe is now open for editing. So what I want to do is just to give the shoe a little bit of a lift. It does look a little bit drab still. Um, so Control L again to bring up the levels. And what I want to do is just bring 
that up and just add a little bit of contrast as well by dragging the midpoint slider to the right just ever so slightly. A little bit more. I still don't I don't want to lose this detail here uh, in the shoe and I think that's that's pretty good. And finally we're gonna push push sorry, control U, bring up the hue saturation window and I'm just going to boost the saturation about there is about good I reckon. Yep, perfect. Fantastic. So we're nearly done. What I need to do now is uh, we're finished with the selection, so control D to deselect those uh, the shoe. And what I need to do now is just to, to zoom in and get rid of these couple of little spots that we've missed. So we're just going to use the spot healing brush there. And what I'm going to do over here on this part of the heel is use the clone stamp tool uh, just to get rid of that. So we'll hold down the Alt key, click where we want to draw the pixels for, take the pixels from, and then just draw in or brush in as such. Nearly done. Final thing to do is just to crop the image down. The clients wanted a square crop for all their images, so that's what we've done. And there we go. Job finished. So as you can see, in a few minutes we've taken a rather drab, horrible looking image that I really wouldn't want anyone to see uh, and turned it into something that's quite respectable to go onto the client's website. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit my blog at timography-blog.blogspot.com. Oh, the link is from our website at timography.net. Click on the blog link down here. Uh, if there's anything you want uh, to be instructed on or any ideas that you might have for future videos, please send me an email, uh, get in touch with me, and we'll be only too happy to do that for you. Uh, until then, take care, and we'll see you next time.